Hello and welcome along to the Banto podcast. We're back, finally, after all this time. And going to kick off this first episode of this season with the wonderful Tommy Cannon. The episode is very emotive, but it's a real celebration of him and his double act partner, Bobby Ball. So please, sit back, relax and enjoy the latest Panto Podcast. My guest for today's Panto Podcast is, dare I say, comedy royalty, perhaps? <laughs> Wouldn't that be okay? Yeah, it's fine. Mr. It's fine. Tommy Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel, though, to be kind of, you know, the in in those sort of hallowed turfs? Well, know? I suppose... Um, I suppose it's it's great. I mean, I don't I, sp- I don't look at it sort of in them that way really. Um, I've been a lucky lad. Um, uh, met a great pal. Got on. Did all what we've done, and I just think it's been part and parcel of my life. I always I think sometimes things are meant to be. There's, you've not got that control over it. Sometimes you go, oh, okay, I'll go along with that, or whatever. Um, and I've been lucky. I've, I've had a um, great partner. Um, fans have been lovely. Um, I've got no... I think I just... Um, I think when you get to a certain age as well, you live every day as full as you can. Because you never know what's around the corner. Um, like this morning, me and Hazel, my wife, we had a walk, a two-hour walk this morning. Um, I still work out. Uh, I've got a little gymnasium upstairs, so I still do a little bit of working out. And um, no, I don't feel I'm 83 by a long way, but I know I am. <laughs> That's the frightening <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, you don't yeah. look it. I will say that for you. Oh, thank you. I, yeah, I, I mean, I do. I do try to keep myself reasonably fit. Um, and my wife walks with me when we walk. She doesn't work out. She's got two sort of metal knees from all the dancing and stuff she used to do. Um, but yeah, um, each day comes along. I li- try and live it to the full, and hopefully, I've been a lucky lad. I've been a lucky lad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm 83 in June. Hi. That's not possible, sure. Yeah, it is, lad. It is. It's one of them things you do. You know, I, I, Bob and I often used to talk, certainly in Panto, because Panto was hard work. Always have been hard work, but we were lucky with Panto, because Panto was, you got every aspect of a full audience, because you got mum, dad, grandma, granddad their kids, grandchildren, so you always had packed houses. It was it was one of those things that you really look forward to. But when we did Panto, it was what you could do as long as 12 weeks. Mm. Now, three weeks is a long run. So when we were doing Panto, it was fantastic. We, we just had this um, wonderful, wonderful, rich audience every show. But by the time you'd done six weeks you were thinking oh my god when are we getting to the end because it was so tiring two shows every day you know and of course new year's day now in panto we get it off but in them days early days we never used to get new year's day off (laughs) so yeah it was they were hard work but they were great shows great shows yeah i think we've done talking well bob a few months back now and last time we were in panto we're trying to Fathom out how many pantos we'd done because one of the pantos is where I met my wife. Uh, she was a dancer, been all over the world virtually dancing. And I, it was it was the strangest thing. Me and Bob were sat in the auditorium and it was Bradford Alhambra and we were topping the bill for the first time. And all, we sat in the audience and with the director and all the girls came on doing a bit. And I, I went like that to Bob. I said, oh my God, she's beautiful. He said, what? I said, she's beautiful. <laughs> he said, well, you tell I said, that girl there on the end, I said, oh, I said, I love her. And that was it. It was, it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing thing. Uh, and yeah, so, I mean, Panto for us has been 
I suppose it were when we f did our first one, it was a learning curve because never having done panto, never had to learn a script, if you like, uh, was a bit sort of daunting. Um, and of course, when we did with Charlie, I'll tell you the greatest panto, one of the great pantos was Charlie Drake, Jack Smethurst, Nat Jackley, me and Bob, and we were bottom of the bill. And Charlie, we had to call him Mr. Drake. We call him Charlie, Mr. Drake. And he was, he knew everybody else's lines as well as his own. So you made a mistake, you knew about it. He would bring you to his dressing room. Yes, Mr. Drake, you didn't do the line right. Your line should be blah, 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 blah. Make sure you do it next time. And oh, he was, he was incredible, incredible. Nat Jackley, bless him, <laughs> we used to do this giant thing and Charlie Drake were on my shoulders. Nat Jackley was next to Charlie and Bob was behind, behind uh, Nat and Nat had, his legs weren't so good, bless him. And he, Bob used to have to shove him. <laughs> go on, Nat, go, move, move. <laughs> it was a scream under there, so yeah. I have many a great panto, we have many, F fantastic, yeah. I suppose panto's been, um, I think it's been like a, it's been like a lifeline because I think we've done about 30, 33 or 34 pantos. Bob and I couldn't remember what, how many we'd done. Um, and I think it is about 33, 34 maybe because we did panto prior to, before we went on to TV, 1978, 1978, 79. Yeah, 79, 80 season was summer season in Blackpool and we'd been doing, we'd done two or three pantos before that. So yeah, maybe 33 pantos or whatever. So London Palladium was, um, I suppose, frightening in a way because we were top of the bill um, Rodol the emu was on. Uh, um, Marty Webb was on. Uh, it was just phenomenal amount of stars on the pantomime, and to this day we still hold the record of pantomime at the London Palladium, which is a, f a fabulous achievement. Fabulous, yeah. So yeah, we 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 done all right, pantos done all right. What was it like then walking out onto that stage at the Palladium? Well, I suppose uh, it, it's like, I suppose it's in a way, it's like Vegas, I suppose. It's the show business, uh, empire of the world, Vegas. And the London Palladium is the absolute, if you like, you can't do anything more than play the London Palladium like Bob Hope, all the big stars have played there. You walk out there to 3,000 seats and it's like, you just can't believe it. And, you know, I suppose in them days as well, Bob and I were lucky because what we were able to do, we were able, we had a few script lines so that we had to keep to because obviously other people were coming on so we had to deliver the right line. But we used to do set pieces, which was fabulous. Um, we'd do the wall routine or we'd do uh, Dolly Dimple routine. So it was, it was, it was really, really good because... I'm I'm skipping back now, but when we did um, <laughs> Bradford Alhambra with Charlie Drake, we had um, Jack Smethurst, was a great actor, and he did um, he did the splosh routine with Charlie, and he did his legging. I don't know how he did it or whatever. Uh, I think he was trying to do a funny walk or something, and his knee went, and he had to go in hospital. So of course the following day. Charles, Charles come up to me and said, uh, Tommy, you've got to take Jack's place. I said, what? Me working with Charlie Drake? I'm like, oh. I said, oh, right. Um, and he sort of topped and tailed it. And um, we did the routine and it went down like a bomb. Whoa, it was incredible. And so I came off and I, Bob stood at wings watching. I said, how do it, Bob? He said, it was brilliant, Tommy. He said, I said, do that. He said, what you're doing is you do, you're playing it like uh, it's me. 
you're shouting. He said, and that's fantastic. So I, I did it for about three or four days, I think it were. And then he stood in the wings, Jack, and he's watching what's going on. And Bob stood with him. And Bob said, this is doing well, eh, Tom? <laughs> and it must have made him, he said, he won't do tomorrow, he says, because I'm going on. So, <laughs> so it, was, it was funny because what happened was, so Jack goes on, and because he hasn't done it for a few nights, he's lost the timing. So Charlie comes on, and he's got to say something to Jack, like, excuse me, like, what's on? And as he does it, he hits him with a custard pie. <laughs> Charlie had to go off, and he was vomiting at wings because the soap had gone down oh. his throat. <laughs> we were in tears. We were in tears. I'll never forget that. Oh, blimey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's funny. Did you come from a theatrical family? No, not at all. Where did uh, you come from then? Well, it's just... Um, I suppose it's just one of them strange um, things, you know. I mean, there's no one, I, unless way back in my family, there's somebody who were in show business or whatever. But no, um, mum and dad were mum were a cotton worker, dad were a miner, um, and basically that was it. You know, no um, nobody in the family with any. I mean, being honest with you, I didn't even know I could sing, never mind anything else. <laughs> I mean, the, whenever we, our football and cricket, and mad sport at school, that's all I, that's all I longed for when I were at school. When I were we leaving school, I wanted a Lancashire Cricket Club or somebody to take me on the books to be in sport. Um, that didn't happen. Um, and so, you know, I've worked a few jobs building trade, I uh, went in Cotton Mill where my mum were for a while. Um, and then, um, what did I do then? I don't know. I, oh, I drove a truck and all sorts of things, you know. Um, so no, no no show business at all. It's, it's strange. And what about the comedy then? Because Well, comedy comes, the most of the comedy was, I mean, I used to get as much laughter from an audience with Bob um on stage i was I, I was laughing as much as i was uh, if you like grabbing him and telling him to behave like a little boy <laughs> um you know it, it's um i think sometimes i think i was the, the only act in show business that used to get booed every time we went on <laughs> and so it used to make me feel sometimes i used to think mm, they don't like me and <laughs> and that wasn't the thing. Like Bob would say, "Hey, you're doing the jo your job. That's why they're doing it. If they weren't booing, it wouldn't be working." So I said, "Ah, I, said, I, said, I suppose you've got a point." But I, it, it is a strange thing. I remember being in St Peter's Square in Manchester, and we did the worst Christmas song I think that's ever been written. It was what were, "Don't Forget My Christmas Present." It was horrendous. <laughs> And we're outside doing all this, promoting it all. And this little old lady, I, can, I see her out at the corner of my house, coming towards me. And I'm singing away, don't forget the Christmas present. Don't forget, I'm watching the Christmas present. And all of a sudden, she had her handbag and she went bang and hit me back at head with the handbag and walked on. And I, I stopped saying, what, 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 she said, he said, Bob said, you know, she didn't like you. <laughs> She didn't have to give me a well, he'll tell you. Oh, dear. Yeah, so, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I've been I've been a lucky boy. I have. The singing, then? Because you were a singer first, weren't you? Yeah, that's what we used to do, yeah, as singer. Um, the, the, the thing about singing was that when we were doing singing, uh, I, I was on drums, and Bob was singing, and then... Don't ask me why, and I can I can know the place. Still see it now. Fitting Arms in Fitting Hill, which was is a place in Oldham, and I'm like this, and he's singing a song, and all of a sudden I started singing, and Bob stopped. He said, "You never told me you could sing." I said, "I didn't know I could sing." <laughs> he said, "That's it." He said, "Put the drums away." He said, "You're coming up front with me." That was that was it. That was it. Because you two met working. Mm. 
Were you? Welding, was it? Yeah, welding, yeah. Yeah, I suppose at the end of the day, um, I mean, Bob had already always been in show business. But when I say always been in show business, he, when he was seven, he used to work with his sister Mavis doing... Um, what they, used, they don't have it anymore. I think it was called Works Playtime. Cotton Mills used to do a Workers Playtime show in, um, in between like tea time or something like that or early morning or something and he used to do them sort of things you know so yeah i mean he'd been in show business more or less forever but you know obviously when you get older and you think you know oh, i can't carry on doing this it's being a sissy if you're in show business <laughs> you know when you're 15 or something like that so yeah um yeah it would just um yeah and i mean the and the pantos like i said the pantos every year as, and as you get older, every year you go, I want to do another panto. <laughs> and we talk many a time, you know, about how, how much longer we could do pantomimes. And, and I think Bob and I would have done them forever. And, I, and I, I'm hoping that I get a panto this year. It will be, certainly be strange, that's for sure. But um, um, we'll have to wait and see, see what happens, you know. Because you were the last of the double acts. Really, there's nobody I can no. think of that can take your place variety no. wise. No, there, there, I, I don't know what's happened with double acts. Like I, I said to the, his son sometimes, um, double acts as we knew them, I, I'm talking now variety double acts. There isn't any, there's none coming through at all. Um, so, and I often said to the lads, because double X are, if you like, not out of vogue, but they're not popular like they used to be. You know, there'd be Mark, Eric and Ernie, there'd be Little and Large, there'd be me and Bob, um, Mike and Bernie Winters, all these, what I call, came from a variety background. Um, I don't know a lot about their background, of course, and, and Ernie, Eric and Ernie, but apparently Ernie was... Um, I think what they used to call a clog dancer or something mm. in his day before he met um, Eric. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't know what it, progress or whatever you want to call it has gone daft. I think progress is fantastic if it's for the better. I don't know whether it's always for the better, but you know, come see, come serve. <laughs> what kind of advice then did you get from other double acts? Um, well, we, I suppose, I suppose we didn't get any advice to, because we didn't think at the time that we would be doing comedy. We always thought we'd be singers. We didn't think that um, in because we sang for the first twelve, first twelve years of our career, we we sang. We didn't do any anything. No jokes, no nothing. We just sang. So um, we didn't really... Uh, Sid and Eddie did comedy from, from day one. Um, I suppose Eric and Ernie did as well. I mean, but I, no, nobody spoke to us, no the double X spoke to us as any advice on what to do or what not to do. We just ploughed our own way through it sort of thing, you know? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, 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 no, no, but I can't remember any other double act. I remember Eric Morecambe, bless him, saying to me and Bob, it was a lovely compliment. We He took us to, he was on the, I think he was on the board at Luton Town Football Club. He took us to watch a match. We, we were working at Caesars Palace, Luton, the nightclub. And he sent us a message, I want you to come to the football club and all that. So we went and he just had his first operation on his heart. And um, he said, um, listen, lads, he said, um, I have to be honest with you. He said, there's no other double act, he said, that we're Eric and er 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 Ernie and I are worried about, he said, but you two we are. And that was the best 
compliment anybody could have from Eric. Oh. Wonderful. Yeah. Where did yeah. the name Cannon and Ball come from then? Um, it came from, well, we were called Harper Brothers, Sherelle Brothers, <laughs> and Bobby and Stevie Rhythm. <laughs> um, and then I liked a rock and roll singer from America. I liked his second name. He was called Freddie Cannon. And I thought Cannon was strong as, as a feed, mm. strong. And so we did. We went through like Cannon and Pepper, Cannon and Salt, Cannon and Vin, all. We went through millions of, and all of a sudden I just said, "Ball." I thought it's obvious, isn't it? Said, Ball. I'm not being called Ball. <laughs> so I said, "It's just a name. It's just a name." So he went. He went for. Um, he went for Ball, and that's that's how we became Cannon and Ball. Yeah. And it's stuck in the British psyche mm. forever. Yeah. Well, big, well, big blockbuster movie as well. Back yeah, in the 80s. yeah, that was um, that was good. Um, we had um, some big stars in there. Um, I think two or three of them away have passed away, bless them. Uh, but that was uh, that was an experience um, making a movie, um, never having done one before, and. What you do is when you get the script, you read it like a book. You think, oh, right, I'll start at the beginning here and I'll go right through it and read it like it's a book. When you get on the set, it's a, right, we're going to page 96 and you go, oh, 96, what? <laughs> you completely don't know where you are. Completely don't know where you are. And so each morning when you got there, they told you in advance that you're going to do paragraph, whatever it might be, and mm. at least that way you could go through it. But... Yeah, that was quite scary doing the movie, yeah. But but we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. It was a great film. Yeah, we enjoyed it, yeah. Nice old theme tune as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it was, were the boys in blue? Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> were the boys in blue? Yeah. Yeah, that was, um, that was Bob and Jeff Gill that wrote that song. And the woo, woo, woo came because they couldn't remember any words to put in, so they just went, whoa, 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 and that was it. <laughs> and, of course, your theme tune as well, Together We'll Be OK. Yeah, that was, that would, that's, that's um, a song that will be with us, with me forever. Um, I'm doing a tour in all being well, start September, and there's Stu Francis and uh, Johnny Casson on the show. Um, and it's going to be, it'll be three old codgers having a laugh and a joke together. And we'll be, and the second half will be uh, me talking about mine and Bob's life together, or 57 years of our life together. And at the end, I will be asking uh, questions and answers from the audience. So hopefully, you know that, um, and you and you can't keep doing that. So you know, hopefully, it'll be um, a one-off time that I get the chance to do that, and so um, and we'll see where that takes us. Well, there's been people who've grown up watching you. Yeah, I mean myself included. Um, yeah, it's. I remember seeing you in Bournemouth. We were talking before we mm. started recording. Yeah. At the Bic, mm. a three thousand seat venue. Mm. You were packing it out twice yeah. a day. Yeah. For a summer season. Yeah. And those days have gone. Yeah. Out. Well, we did. Uh, we did the. Um, Winter Gardens and the Opera House in Blackpool and sold it out 3,400 seats a night, um, two shows a night. So that was 6,800 people or whatever for 23 weeks. And it, well, we still hold the record there, still, still hold it. Saturday night telly as well. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, Saturday Millions. night. Yeah, t Saturday night television. <laughs> I mean, you look at it and you, you think to yourself, blimey, you know, all them people used to watch us, but, and then you have to stop and say, yeah, we had 20 million viewers, but there were only four channels. Whereas now there's got, like, if you get 3 million audience now, you're doing really well. So, yeah, um, and, uh, we love TV. We loved, we loved, and and once again, even that's changed now. We used to go every year to do 
well, Easter special, Christmas special, and then the six week thing, which used to run just up to prior to summer season. And we used to do that and did it for 13 years. And all the crew, makeup, everybody were the same every time we went back. Now you go to TV, you walk in, because they're all self employed. Mm. So consequently, now everybody, oh, I don't remember you, I don't know you. And so it's one of them now. But uh, it used to be like a family in them days. Yeah. You said then working with Charlie Drake mm. was an experience. Yes. It, you can't um, you can't explain um, what Charlie was like in a, in in a pantomime. He was this little fella that, like Bob, he was this. He had this magic. He had a twinkle in his eye, um, and he, he whenever. <laughs> There were some what's the names, and I've just remembered now. <laughs> there were some seals on with us. It was it was some guy that had these seals. He did this clapping act with them. He used to make them clap their things like that, bump, bump, bump like that. And Charlie was on stage, and one of the seals got out of the cage. And as he's talking, seal come across the back of him on stage, and bump, 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 bump. get that seal off. <laughs> Well, he, he didn't realise, Charlie, how, how tremendous the audience were howling about at it. It was, it was incredible. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> oh, dear. Do you like the chaos of pantomime? Yeah, and, and it is sometimes. Um, <laughs> when things go wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose in pantomime, it's not that big a deal. Bob and I used to go on in panto... And we would say, right, tell you what we'll do. And it was so wrong of us, but we used, I used to say, right, I'll take your lines and you take mine. And we'd go on and do, I'd do Bob's lines and he'd do mine. And the people, they were like, the king were on and he were going, because they didn't know what the hell to do, because they couldn't say the lines, because it were all mixed up. And we used to just be, well, we used to be howling, laughing. But And I mean, yes, we got into trouble because the director would come in one night. He'd, he, they come in now and again to see whether the show's still running as he directed mm. and all that. <laughs> and of course, when he's in, you try to, what's him, but he never told you when he was coming in. So he'd sit there this night and go, the hell's going on? Tom's doing Bob's lines and Bob's doing Tom's lines. That's not right. <laughs> and of course, he used to come backstage and give us a rollicking after doing it. But, <laughs> Part and parcel, you know. <laughs> we we used to be in the wings sh shouting at acts when they were on, you know. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's panto. That's panto. It's 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 been brilliant. Yeah. Did you take the kids to go and see panto much? No. Um, I don't. Yeah, they used to come um, when they got a bit older. Yeah, I mean, and you know. I got three children with um, with my second wife with A's and um, yeah they used to come to Panto. My daughter Kelly is a she could have been an actress. She can sing. She can act. She's been in amateur dramatics and stuff like that. But um, she um, she let it go. And yeah, at the end of the day, they have to make their own minds up. You know, if they, whether they want to be in the business, because. Um, you know, it's not all um, sort of roses and, you know, what people make it out to be. Um, you know, there's, oh, what a job you got. You stop in hotels, you do this, you do that. It's hard work sometimes. Um, you travel, you might travel as far as Southampton and you, then your following night, your gig might be in York. And so you've got to come all the way back. And so it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy sometimes, you know, but it just becomes part of your life. You know, I wouldn't... Um, I wouldn't swap what I've done over the past 57 years with Bob for anything. Have you ever been tempted to get into serious acting? Um, I suppose... Yeah, I suppose both of us have might have fancied a bit of that, but um, it never gets offered to you because they always think you're a clown. They always think, oh, they, they can't act, they can't do this, they can't do that, they're just what they are. 
Um, so no, it, it's never come up. I mean, I did Emmerdale for three series and um, I played, because of my age, which is I think is daft sometimes, I played this old man with a walking frame and um, that was difficult for me because I don't think I'm 83. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So to like wobble around and like, mm. um, and uh, I only did three episodes because they said um, he can do three episodes because I'd, I'd been somewhere with some of the people to Belfast for a charity night and they'd all gone over there and I, I, I flew out because I know the PR girl and um, and I, I'd had a few to drink and I said, well, I said, I'd love to do Emmerdale with you lot. So I, they all went, you wouldn't, would you? I said, yeah. <laughs> so, of course, they all go back after boss him and they tell it direct to him, we want Tommy on show, he wants to do it. <laughs> so I, that were it. And so he said, that said, all right, you can do three episodes. So I did three episodes of it, which I enjoyed, to be honest with you. And then you I, popped up in Not Going Out? Yeah, yeah. That was a surprise as well. Yeah, well, who's it? Um, Lee always says the best reaction he ever got from uh, an audience was uh, when you walked out as the vicar. He said that roar <laughs> went up, he said, and I thought, wow, that's fantastic, you know. But you see, it's difficult to put Cannon and Ball, it was difficult in them days to put us in anything like that as two different people because you're Cannon and Ball mm. when you're together. When you're separate, I'm Tommy Cannon and Bob were Bobby Ball. So it was, so that's what, it was It was strange how the little bits that Bob got, which was brilliant for him, they always want, they all, and it's fine, they always, they always go for the funny guy, uh, which is fine because it's a funny part that's required. Mm. And I, there's no way in a million years were I ever as funny as Bob. I mean, God blimey, he was, he was just magic, Bob. Magic, magic. What was it like when you found out the news that he was ill? Um, well, I suppose I didn't, um, I was in shock uh, because we'd just done a gig and um, I was, um, got a phone call saying um, Bob's been taken into hospital and uh, I said, wow, I said, well, we're only two or three nights ago. I said, we did this gig and all. He's, so he said, yeah, he's, he's, he's in hospital. Um, he's, uh, he's got COVID. I said, has he? I said, I can't believe that. Following day, um, he's in hospital and he FaceTimes me with all the nurses around his bed. <laughs> and he said, hey, Tom, it's Bob. I said, hey, pal, how are you doing? He said, all right. He said, I've got to FaceTime. He said, because all nurses want to wave to you. And they're all waving to me, like, on FaceTime. I said, well, you're supposed to be poorly, you. He said, oh, he said, I, I said, listen, get well, all right, mate. That was it. That was the last, um, that was the last thing uh, I heard from him. When he, they moved him into the, um, I forget what ward it went out. They moved him anyway to a ward where they could keep their eye on him. And, um, of course, when they moved him, I couldn't go and see him because of COVID or whatever. Um, and it was, just a, it was just a sad time. And, uh, and then as days went on and on and on and on, um, the news just got worse, worse. And his, his lads were speaking to me. I was speaking to the lads. Um, and it were all... It was all horrible and um, then I got the phone call fr uh, from Yvonne I think I, I wonder whether it was one of the lads or Yvonne anyway I got the phone call and said he passed away and I said my god I said I, I, I don't know where I am I, I, I'm I don't I don't I couldn't answer I just I, I swore to be honest but um, yeah it was it wasn't good it wasn't good um, and um, I'll never, uh, I'll never forget him. In a million years, he made me laugh as much as he made the audiences laugh. Um, and we were buddies, you know. 
He'll be with you. Oh, no, he's watching me now. He's telling me now. I can hear him saying, get on with it, you soft sod. <laughs> what were your favourite routines then? Because, can I tell you my, one of my yeah. favourite routines? Yeah. Either the trumpet yeah. or Molly Malone. Yeah. Well, trumpet, Molly Malone, uh, the wall routine. I used to lo- love doing Dolly Dimple because um, Dolly Dimple was a puppet thing. And when we were rehearsing it, I couldn't get, I had to go, Hello, my name's Dolly Dimple. (laughs) And my name's Corky the Clown. And I used to have to do that, you see. And I I, I put Dolly up and I went, Hello, my name's Dolly. Mm. And my name's Corky. No. (laughs) Sid Green, who was our writer, who used to write for Eric and Ernie, came over the wall with his head and said, When are you going to get this right? And it's the only time ever. In our career, that I lost it. I threw the puppets up in the air. I said, "Get it right yourself." And I walked. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out of the room, rehearsal. Oh. And then, of course, I had to come back and be embarrassed because I thought, "Oh, you've done the stupid thing here. Why didn't you keep calm and all that?" You know. But it was the only time in our TV career that I actually lost the plot because I couldn't get the blinking dolls right. Oh. Whose idea was the Molly Malone then? Um. Most ideas, I suppose, were Bob, but he would write something, then give me the script, and I would say, well, I don't want that, don't like this, this, or, and that's how we always sort of worked it out. Um, and, you know, for the life in me, I can't think, I don't know what, something, Bob, come up with the idea but I don't know how we got Molly Malone I don't know I don't know where the, the song was came yes but I don't know how we got that song I don't know <laughs> I can't remember for the life in me how we got the song but we did <laughs> we did yeah it, Molly Malone the trumpet routine was brilliant um, the thing about the trumpet routine was at one point I think the audience could have beaten me up um, for stomping the trumpet to bits and pieces and stuff like that. Um, but you see, we used to do all that sort of stuff in panto uh, because it lent itself to pantomime, you know. We used to do a um, a routine where he was supposed to paper in the wall and he used to roll the paper down the ladder and stand in the paper as he were going up make holes in the, you know. <clears throat> I suppose we did... We did lots and lots of routines. I suppose half of them, I can't even remember. Uh, we did that many. Um, yeah, I, I suppose there was some stuff in Panto as well that was were actually written, which weren't our own material. It was, um, they'd have a writer working on the script and he would say, right, I'm going to do the, the, I'll do this routine for him. And, but the thing was, if we didn't like the routine, we could always throw it out because we always had other stuff we could put in because mm. it's only two or three seasons back in crew pantomime landing crew was he he had a routine with us that uh, roy castle um big tall lanky live woods yes the three of them <laughs> used to do this routine and it was somebody coming on to them on and off stage and we did it and did it and did it and did it. Um, we had to say to the director, right, we do this. If it doesn't get any laughs, it's gone. We did it the first night, that was it, we're gone. And we had to put our own routine in it because it just it didn't work for us. But it was an it was a real, real funny routine. But for us, for somehow, it didn't work. It just died on its backside. So of course that were it, we threw it out and did our own stuff. <laughs> Travelling then all over the UK, were there any audiences you preferred? North, South, East, West? Um, <clears throat> well, I suppose in the early days, I suppose because we have such strong Lancastrian accents, a lot of the stuff was we were doing, certainly when we went to 
as far down south as Bournemouth and places like that and, and Torquay, some of the stuff they didn't just quite understand. And I remember a lady coming to Bournemouth saying, Tom, I think you need to have elocution lessons. <laughs> and I said, sorry? She said, she said, they didn't understand you. I said, oh, oh, it was Rod Hull's manageress. So um, after she'd gone, I'm looking at Bob and I said, can you imagine me saying, what are you doing, Robert? For goodness sake, just behave yourself. I said, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. He said, oh, no, he said, we don't do any of that nonsense. We stay as we are. The, the likers or the haters, that's the end to it, you know. <laughs> yeah, there were, but now, of course, Coronation Street, and it's now easy now because they, everybody understands how Lancashire and Yorkshire folk, you know, speak. How did the Americans take to you then? Um, we had um, Branson, Missouri, was, we played the Will Rogers Theatre, I think it was, and Glen Campbell was top of the bill at the theatre that we should have gone and we should have been his support act. And on the last, the week before we were going, Glen Campbell asked to see a video of what we did. So they let him look at a video and he said, no, you're not coming on my show, they're too good. <laughs> True story. Glen Gamble. Yeah, and wow. so we had to go to the Will Rogers Theatre and top the bill. And we struggled for most of the time. Nobody had heard of us. Who are these cannon and ball from England? It was one of them. But Florida was good. We went we enjoyed Florida. Um apart from one night when we walked on and walked off to the sound of our own feet because all the audience were Russians and nobody told us. <laughs> yeah, so we've had some experiences, yeah. I still love that routine as well that you did on the wheel tappers. When you, when he was conducting the orchestra. Well, no, when, when it was the very first time on wheel tappers when you came out singing and then... Bobby says, that's my mate. That's oh, my mate. from the audience. And then people in the audience got angry with mm. him. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, that was that was early door stuff that we, when we did, um, what did we do? Batley Variety Club. And um, I think it was Batley Variety Club. I can't think what it was. Anyway, we did Battle of Variety Club and he, he came from the audience saying, that's my mate. And we used to have the bouncer come on and pretend to take him out. And it, we did that for two or three nights. Then on the fourth night, the, the spotlight hit the bouncer and he liked it. Now, couldn't get him off. <laughs> I'm talking to the bouncer, get him off. What are you doing? You're spoiling the act. Get him off. And he went, oh, Hilarious, absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was great though that sort of breaking the wall, like you do in pantomime as well with the act. Yeah, I, I think panto's a lot easier to do it, um, and as long as your people, because there's a, there's a good few people working panto, and they're all good at their own individual part. They're all part of a big production, and it's as long as they have some understanding that things can go wrong uh, because sometimes uh, if you have an actor on who's a credible actor, they learn the lines like you wouldn't believe. So you slip up with them and, you know, you get slap wrists. <laughs> but uh, other people, are they're good. I mean, and they'll laugh if, if, if there's a bit of a mess or a something gets, you know, you forget a line or whatever it might be. It's just, it's part and parcel. Um, but uh, I love it when things go wrong because I'm, I'm a giggler. So once I start, <laughs> I've had it, I can't stop. So I love things when they go wrong. I love them. Who have been your favourite comedians then to watch? Either from the wings or in the audience? Well, I suppose 
Um, I've always, it's weird really, because as a kid, I always loved double acts. Bob Abbott Luke Costello, Laurel and Hardy, um, Jerry Lewis, Dean Martin. Um, and it, it, it's weird how I used to sit on an orange box, I used to pay a penny or a tuppence or something to go into cinema and laugh my head off at these double acts. And it was called the Savoy, the cinema that I used to go to. And, um, and here I am, all these years later, been part of one of Britain's best double acts. So it's it's strange how things happen and, and you go along, you know, I mean, and I, even as a kid, I never thought to myself, oh, I'd love to be in a double act like that. It, it was just, it was just the laughter I got from it. Um, so, you know, um, no, it's, it's it, I, I often sit back sometimes when I'm at night time, I'll have a tot of whiskey or something and I think, you know what, I've had a damn good life. It's been fantastic. Um, I, when I think back of all the fun that Bob and I have had, especially in Panto, more, Panto more than anywhere, um, we've always been able to play the odd joke on the cast and stuff, you know, and they've all come off laughing and giggling, you know what I mean? And, um, but then when you somebody will say, can't do that tomorrow, Tommy, why not? Director's in. So, of course, you've got to go right down the line then, and sometimes that, you think, well, that's boring tonight. We're going, we can't do any, you know, ifs and buts sort of thing. Yeah. Was it difficult being kind of the straight man of the two? Well, yeah, I suppose so. Um, I don't know. I don't know really the job a straight man has. I know he's supposed to stand there and take the butt of the jokes or the sort of side remarks that come but I I never felt myself as this straight man I always felt myself as just me I'm, I'm me that you know I, it's apart from the shouting which I did quite a lot of apart from the shouting that were me that was that mm. Tommy that would you know I you know when they say you're a good. You were a good straight man, or a, I don't know, straight to what? It's one of those really, you know, Eric and Ernie. Um, yes, you knew Ernie was the straight half part. Like you know that I was the straight part, but it's I find it hard to define. Mm. You know what what a straight man is. I, I find it hard. I am a bit of a comedy geek, I'm not going to lie, and <clears throat> I always find that I, I study a lot of comedy, and the fact that you being kind of the straight man, but you were the more good-looking of the of the pair, you know, Bobby mm. was mm. little yeah, and yeah, yeah. funny looking, yeah, and yeah. you looked at him and yeah. you laughed, whereas you were the, the, the nice looking yeah, yeah. guy, and so you've got the two of you together, so there's that instant contrast, mm. you're taller than him. Yeah. And he was like the little oik and yeah, yeah. always dressed like a herb with mm -hmm. the brown suede yeah. shoes, which <laughs> yeah. just instantly looked <laughs> terrible, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. But you were always in the sharp suit. Yeah, he yeah. Wasn't. And so you've always got that kind of... It's a contrast, isn't it? Contrast. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, basically, I suppose at the end of the day, that was it. You know, the, the two, me in a sharp suit and Bob... Dressed like a ragamuffin, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, yeah, I suppose that's... A dash of the normal wisdoms about here. Yeah, that's of, right, that's right, yeah. You know, the George Ford, yeah. the oik kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's it, yeah. That's good, that, yeah. And, and you were the smart one. Yeah. That's the thing as well. Yeah, but, yeah. Which, but he always got one over on Yeah, him. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he did that someone often. <laughs> yeah. And also... Who would get the girl out of you yeah. as the act? Yeah. You know, yeah. Who sure. would get the girl? Yeah. You know, the girls would fancy you, but then you yeah. win them with the laugh. Yeah, you? that's right. That's right. Yeah. It's, I suppose. I suppose at the end of the day, the we couldn't have been any different. Uh, it was. We met. It happened. Who knows why, or what, or but, I certainly enjoyed. Um, all the time working with him in Panto, TV, 
movie. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I don't think we ever wrote, you know, because we often talked about writing our own panto script. And then you think to yourself, well, hang on a minute. Yeah, we can write for ourselves, but come on. Another 20 people in the panto and <laughs> having to write for all them. No, let's leave it. So we never got to that uh, stage. But we always were always able to change scripts. You know, if the script came, um, you know, we used to always play, we used to do the uh, Babes in the Wood when you could do that. It's no longer, now you can't do that. But we used to always be the robbers who, you know, took off into the woods with the babies and um, all that got stopped um, years back, uh, Babes in the Wood. I think we did it maybe three times or something, but then it got stopped. Um, and so, you know, you wait for scripts to come now and you normally get them like, <laughs> you normally get them about uh, July or something like that. And I think that's good because what it does, it gives you time to digest. It gives you time to look at it and say, no, we don't want that. We don't want, yes, we'll do that. We'll do, and it gives you time to get your head around it a little bit because I, I must have 25 scripts in me, what I call me um, box with all my memorabilia in. So, yeah. Do you remember the first time when you met Bobby? Not really. Because <laughs> you, you worked together, but how did your sort of friendship come about? I think because, um, I think he, I think he said he was, um, what did he say we're doing? Working, um, what were you, it's, were you working a social club or something? Oh, bloody hell. Working, I think he was working a social club. And I, I think he said to me, why don't you come down? To, to see to see me that were it I think and I went down and saw him and um, I just said oh yeah we're alright you know I had a pint and what have you and that, that was like that was it um, that was our if you like our first social thing together if you like well not together I mean I left after and he went his way and I went my way and then we saw one another again in work so yeah I mean I think that was the um I think that was the moment, but never, like, never um, anything mentioned about me joining him or anything like that. It was just, it were it went on, I don't know how long it were before he, he just, um, what did he do? He said, so, he said, oh, he said, do you fancy making a double act to me? And I said, me? I said, you're joking, aren't you? I said, Double I said, I've never been in show business. I said, I don't know anything about that. And I think he said, he said, get a set of drums, he said, and I'll teach you a few riffs on the drums and all that. So following day I went in, I said, I've got a set of drums. He said, I'll fire. He said, you're keen. <laughs> so, and and that was it. We, we off we went and um, did a few weddings and nonsense things and Bob was singing and... Um, and like I said, then Fit and Arms came up and I, I sang a, a couple a line or something like that. He stopped, he said, you never told me you could sing. I said, well, I, said, I didn't know I could sing. Because I, like I said, the only time that I ever sang was when I was piled with beer. Because if we went to Blackpool for a weekend, if we'd won a cup or whatever we might have done in football, I'd be sat there with all the lads and there'd be a singer on and they'd say to me, go on, Tommy, get up, give us a song, you're better than him. But... <laughs> If I hadn't, if I didn't feel drunk, I wouldn't get up. I was no, 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 no. Another couple of pints I need. So I, and then it's when I got up. Then they, all, they what's the name, lads? Give me a standing ovation. Want to take it, Mickey, out of me. But yeah, um, it's been, it's been phenomenal. Um, I couldn't have had it. Couldn't have had it any better. Um, couldn't have had a better partner for Panto. The laughs that I have had from him has been I don't think it'll I don't think it'll ever happen again. Um there's no way I can't think of anybody um that makes me laugh like Bob used to. 
Can't think of anybody. Yeah. He'll be sadly missed. Sadly missed. He's missed by everybody. I know. I know. Yeah. Even seeing the little nod on the Royal Variety mm. last year. Yeah. Just a nice little touch. Just to... Yeah. Because people are growing up with him. You oh, yeah. You're lucky enough to work with him and be his best yeah. friend. And... Yeah. 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 It's just... You still... I still... I see his face every day. But it's just... You just can't get your head around the fact that he's not here. He's... he's well, he is. Mm. But he's up, he's up there with all the greats. He's up there with all the greats. Eric, Ernie... Norman Collier, Frank Carson, they're all up there, all the greats. He'd be, he'd be having a ball. Well, that's a pun, isn't it? He'd be having a ball. <laughs> yeah. Has your faith helped? Um, yes, I think so. I, I think, I think you, I think there comes a time in your life when you often wonder and both of us must have done wondered how long we would be on this earth if you like um i was always the elder i was um i was six years older than bob um and i suppose yeah i, I think it does I've, I've spoke and i've spoke i spoke to the lord and you know he's, he's he said he's all right he's fine there's not a problem you know um and um and i believe that i believe it it's it's just um you can't explain to anyone how you really feel because it's something that's very personal to me and always will be so it's it's not that easy for me to say to anybody it's this it's that it's the other because it's now, if you like, gone. Everybody has to get on with their lives. His two lads, his wife, his family, they'll all forever miss him, but they will eventually get on with their lives because you have to. You have to. Do you find yourself watching much of your old routines? Yeah, I have done, yeah. Um, I suppose I'm doing it now more than ever simply because I want to try to remember what we've done, what we've been through for when I start the tour because I want it to be, although I want it to be part of, part about Bob, I also want it to be happy. I don't want it to be one of these things where everybody goes, oh, cool, this is boring. I want it to be up, uplifting, you know, because that's what Bob would want. Remembering the good times. Mm, yeah. And boy, have you given us good oh, times. Thank you really have uh, as i said you know as a little kid yeah you know whenever you, anybody wears braces yeah i know you just <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah i know i don't think there's a more iconic comedy symbol no no there's the tommy cooper fez there's yeah yeah red braces yeah <laughs> yeah 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 well that it's i suppose it's um i don't know I, it's just when I think back of everything that we've done, there isn't anything else we can do. We've done it all. Mm. Royal Command performances, um, Royal Albert Hall, Prince e Charles Trust. Even the jungle. Even the jungle. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we've done it all. I, uh, it's, just, um, it's just nice sometimes to sit back uh, at night time. And, and of course... Nobody's got had anything to do with this. These times we're in, I can't remember a time in my eighty-three years when, in that time, even during the war, I cannot remember that many people passing away and dying with like they have, and so there's been nothing to do. And then, you know, I've sat sometimes, and I've thought to myself, well. There's nothing else to do, lad. You've done it all. It's all been done. You've had the glory. I'll always, like Bob, I'll always be remembered. Um, what more do you want? 
you know, sit here, <coughs> excuse me, I'll sit here tonight, I'll have a tot of whiskey, and I'll say, cheers, Bob, and um, we'll get on with life. Yeah, because it's, I suppose, it's like anything, you know, I haven't worked for over 12 months, and, you know, getting back to it is going to be strange, but doubly strange for me, because I'm out there on my own. My right arm has been took off, so it will be, um, it will be strange, but uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. What would be your advice then for any sort of up and coming comedy acts or duos? To be honest with you, <clears throat> I don't know, because I don't know anymore what TV is looking for, because it's so... Everything's so different on TV. And I know we've had lockdown and I know TV's been struggling to do certain things and to make it right and um, and all. But um, apart from Darren and Robert, I couldn't even advise them what lane to go down. Because when we were doing it, four channels you either went down one of them four or you didn't go anywhere now there's three thousand channels and you could you know who knows <laughs> this time in a year they could be on television doing like we used to do nobody knows anymore you, you don't you know i i can well imagine managers and agents um trying to find work for the racks what they've got and I would have thought over this past 12 months it's been horrendous horrendous but you know fingers crossed we're coming out of it lights at the end of the tunnel and we'll see what happens I do think there is a huge thirst out there for yeah, there live is. entertainment there is. and variety mm. because we're sick to death of watching it on the telly oh yeah, yeah. you want to be in an you want to be in the my my only worry is hopefully they will come out to see the shows. Um, hopefully they will get over the fear of sitting shoulder to shoulder with people that they don't know. Um, and I think they will because I think we'll, Britain's public will be brave enough to do it. I think they will. Well, this leads me on to my last question for you. Your dream pantomime. So you can be in it. <laughs> you could be in the stalls watching it. You can choose the production, the theatre, and the cast can be alive or a past. Oh, you've put me in the spot there because that's we've done so many. Um, it could be something you haven't even done. Sorry? It could be something you haven't even done. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You two as uglies. I'd love to see that. <laughs> we've done the uglies. Have you? Yeah, once. Um, <laughs> I've done the research, but I never knew that. Lincoln. <laughs> we suddenly said uh, let's do Panto uh, we'll do Lincoln we'd done five years at Pan in Lincoln and we said right let's break the mould we'll do the uglies and Bob, Bob said no way he said I'm not dressing up as a woman <laughs> he did it and God bless him he wanted to do it again and again and again he enjoyed it so much. Did he keep the tash? Yeah, because <laughs> it was funny because we actually got another catchphrase going. Because somebody from the audience said about his moustache. I said, how can you be a woman? I said, you've got a moustache. And somebody from the audience shouted, take it off. And all the audience shouted, take it off, take it off. And that's what the masked singer does now. And they said, take it off, take it <laughs> And everybody in Lincoln, when we used to go out having lunch or whatever it was, they'd go, take it off, take it off. <laughs> and so he loved it. He, it was, it was, it was, it was the strangest ever panto that we ever did as the Ugly Sisters. And uh, yeah, I, and it was strange because after that he wanted to do it again and again. I, I said, no, no, hang on. I said, we can't do it, keep doing that. Yeah, so yeah. That was um, that was really really a, a spe we've only ever done it once in thirty odd years. We've only ever done uglies once. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Well, your dream panto then? What what would it be? 
What's your favourite story? Well, I like a good panto story, like, you know, um, Cinderella, Robin Hood, you know, some something with a bit of, some action in it sort of thing, you know. Um, I don't like these sort of wishy-washy pantomimes where there's nothing really big going on. You know, I like to, Bob and I, when we came out of the jungle, went to Hull in, and we flew for the first time on wire. And it was, oh, it was magical. And I can't think for the life of me, what it, Peter Pan. I think it might have been Peter Pan. And that's really a panto, that's really pantomime. And uh, we were supposedly swimming. And we were on these wires right, right up. We must have been 30 feet up. And we were swimming and there was a cloth in front of us that was like the sea. And it just looked like we were swimming on top of the ocean. It was fantastic. I loved it. I would all marks down his arms because we had to somersault as well while we were up there and of course the thin wires mm. they went down your arm every time you somersaulted my arms were black and blue <laughs> yeah but that was that was special yeah yeah that was special i think i'd fly again i've got the chance who would yeah. be in it with you then who would be your who would be your hook oh um who would be hook well well, um, we've had a Welsh lad working with us in um, um, at Crew, Panto, and he is, I can't think of his name. Stefan. Stefan, yeah. Oh, Stefan right. Pedgett. Is it Pedgett? Pedgett? I don't know what, it, but he is evil. He is evil. And um, he would be, he would be my ideal he will, yeah. He would be. He would be the man. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He, he was good. <laughs> Your Peter. Uh, I don't know. It's um. It's a strong part, but it's strong mellow sort of thing. Um, I'm trying to think who 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 um who would be. Ideal for that part. I don't know. I suppose it could be, um, I'm going to say Billy Pierce, but I'm not so sure. It could be Billy. It could be Billy Pierce. He's had his own pantomime in Bradford for, for the past 20 years. Yeah, he'd, he'd be all right. Yeah, Billy would be fine. Yeah. That's a Billy. And Wendy? Oh, God's truth. Um, I can't think of her name. And she's what she's doing a play now with a friend of mine it's called Leah Bell. She's doing a play with her. And uh, she's a really sweet woman, girl. I can't think of her name. Not Vicky Michelle, is it? Yes, it is Vicky Michelle. It is Vicky's doing this play. Yeah, yeah, Vicky Michelle would be great. Yeah, yeah, that'll be all right. I've had Leah on the podcast before. Have you? Yeah. Oh, she's a big friend of mine. We first worked together in 1976 in Jersey. Yeah, Leah. And where would be your venue for your dream panto then? Well, I, I mean, I could say the London Palladium, but I won't. <laughs> um, I don't, to be honest with you, anywhere we've been in Panto, we've had great audiences. So to pick one would be unfair to all the other theatres because I can't, I can't recollect. I, I tell you what, I'll pick one because my wife sat there. Bradford Alhambra, when we went back to Bradford Alhambra, topping the bill was the first time I saw my wife. So that's my favourite venue. You're still a charmer, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you have to tell me where it would have been otherwise. <laughs> if she was in the room. 
<laughs> Actually, Bradford and Lambert is a great pantomime date. Whole, I mean, I can't all of all the panto dates. I can't say that I've got a favourite. You know, we've worked at Lincoln for five years. We've worked at Crew this last four years. So to say which one is my favourite, I can't because because they're all favourites, all of them. They really are. Well, Tommy, thank you so much for taking part. You're That's welcome. Fun. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you.